from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Francis Salesiar, and today our homilist is Deacon Robert Kinghorn. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from two donors. The first is Anne from St. Catharines, Ontario, in loving memory of her husband, Jerome de Sousa. The second is an anonymous donor from Ryan, Luciana, for living and deceased family members, the souls in purgatory, and for good health, peace, and justice for all. In thanksgiving for many blessings received and for the intentions of all his friends and relatives, as well as all the viewers of the daily TV Mass. Our sincere thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. With your spirit. As we come together today, we celebrate the memorial of St. Pius of Pietrici Pietriliciana. As we come together, we are called to acknowledge through the scripture of the sower and the seed. God sows the word of God, and we are called to continue to produce fruit, we ask God's pardon for the moments of failures. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who by a singular grace gave the priest St. Pius a share in the cross of your Son, and by means of his ministry, renewed the wonders of your mercy, grant that through his intercession we may be united constantly to the suffering of Christ, and so brought happily to the glory of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to Timothy. In the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who in his testimony before Pontius Pilate made the good confession, I charge you to keep the commandment without spot or blame, until the manifestation of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the right time. He who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, it is he alone who has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal dominion. Amen. The word of the Lord.
joy into the presence of thy Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When a great crowd gathered and people from town after town came to Jesus, he he told them a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell on the path and was trampled on, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered for lack of moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. Some fell into good soil, and when it grew, it produced a hundredfold. As he said this, he called out, let anyone with ears hear. Then his disciples asked him what this parable meant. Jesus said, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but to others I speak in parables, so that looking they may not perceive, and listening they may not understand. Now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God, the ones on the path are those who have heard. Then the devil comes, and it takes away the word from their hearts, so they may not believe and be saved. The ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy, and these have no root. They believe only for a while, and in a time of testing they fall away. As for what fell among the thorns, these are the ones who hear But as they go on their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and the pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. But as for that in the good soil, these are the ones who, when they hear the word of God, hold it fast in an honest and a good heart, and bear fruit with patience, endurance." The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many years ago, I I went into a a church. I hadn't been into it for a long time. And they had redecorated the sanctuary of the church. And in it, they had a beautiful image of the risen Christ rising from the grave. And you know, when you, you look at something, you say, well, there's something wrong with this. What's wrong with this image? Then suddenly it dawned on me. There was no crucifix. They'd taken away the crucifix and just to this image of the risen Christ. Well, you know, it was almost as though we don't want to believe the reality of life, that Jesus was a human like us. He lived and he died and he lived our life. And this is what we are called to be, to be like Christ. And it's just the same as when we trust in the Lord, trust in the life that he lived and try to follow him, we start to develop this good soil that we talked about in this gospel today. The good soil, or maybe we call it God's soil. The good soil that St. Luke in the gospel said, those in the good soil hold fast with an honest and good heart and bear fruit 
with patience, endurance. So I think this is why it's so important that we keep that crucifix and the resurrection together. It's through the, the suffering in many ways of our life that the problems have come through. They develop that good soil that we all need to hold on to the Word of God in our life. Our saint today, Pius, he was one who was ill from very much of his life. And through that, he helped to develop that good soil because he continued to pray with patience and patient endurance. So that's the, in some ways the, the theme for today. But it's also about hope. Hope that we, in the sufferings that we have in our life, we too will rise with Jesus as well. And, you know, I, I remember I always wondered when I was listening to this gospel reading, when I was growing up, what kind of soil am I? <laughs> we all want to be that good soil, don't we? Oh, please, God, let me be the good soil. But you know the reality of life? We're all a mixture. We're a mixture of various types of soil. I mean, it depends on the twists and turns in our life. But, you know, we all have that good soil within us. Everyone has good soil, no matter who we see. And more and more as I work on the streets with people and see the faith that these people have, despite all of the things that even to me might have brought me to a point where I don't believe. They still believe. They still have that good soil and something in their life has taken root and they still believe in God, a loving God, despite everything. So I think in many ways this is why we are drawn to the cross as a people. Because we see Jesus who's a human like us except in sin. And through these sufferings, he offered himself up. And it's through these sufferings, these small things in our life, that we too are changed. And we want to, at that point, join with Jesus in the resurrection to a life when we die. So this is why we always have to keep the cross and the resurrection together with us in our life. And we're always drawn to, but sometimes the, the things that come to us, the crosses in our life, maybe they're imposed by others on us. Sometimes we bring it upon ourselves. And sometimes, you know, it's just the events in life, things that come. But these are the little crosses, if you like. These things, maybe it's an illness, an illness like a, our saint today had throughout his life that we just long to get rid of, but yet it is still there. So today, we talk about hope. We talk about the hope that the, the life of Jesus has brought into our life, that in our life at these moments, we can always turn to a Jesus on the cross who understands everything about us and still loves us. A Lord who saved us, and every time we come to that cross, we kneel there and we look. And it reminds us that we believe in a God who cares. We believe in a God who forgives. We believe in a God who brings life and salvation to each one of us, each in our own way. But we also believe in a God who brings hope. Isn't that what we need so much in the world today? especially with social media that spreads many lies. Or we see everyone's social media posting, we say, wow, their life is going so well. Look at mine. Sometimes we get discouraged. But always we come back to Jesus. We come back to Jesus and that cross there because we believe in a God that brings us hope. Hope in a world where darkness always seems to loom. But in the midst of that darkness, we can look towards that resurrection. Again, as I started, the cross and the resurrection go together. And we constantly reach out to Jesus. And when we see that resurrection, we can always say, I know my Savior lives. And that's why we come to the Eucharist, isn't it? 
because we know our Savior lives, and our Savior lives, and we receive our Savior in the Eucharist. So today, let us again thank the Lord for his suffering and his death, and call upon the Lord that we too can be good soil in our life through the things that we, we sometimes have to endure. But we offer it all to the Father and ask for the Father's love. And so, let us pray to the Lord at this moment, the Lord who understands our needs and who died and rose that we may have life. So for all those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those suffering from an addiction, for those in recovery, and for those seeking healing, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for those trapped in the evil of modern-day slavery, for all who work to help those people, and to increase the number of those willing to get involved to bring an end to human trafficking. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, housebound, homeless, or struggling with hardship, that they may find healing and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus, you gave us a wonderful example of love. Grant, as we hear his words, and receive him in the Eucharist, we may follow his way of love in our daily lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed pious, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just of a duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For us on the festival of St. Padre Pio, you bid your church rejoice. So too, you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Blessed. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May partaking of the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high in all who celebrate the feast day of St. Padre Pio, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith, and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Amen. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. Gather each